The Radio Memories Network is brought to you in part by Liberated Syndication, podcast publishing made easy, Libsyn.com. That's L-I-B-S-Y-N dot com. Now let's join the Green Hornet in this week's episode. The Green Hornet. He hunts the biggest of all game, public enemies that even the G-men cannot reach. The Green Hornet. Faithful valet Cato, Britt Reed, daring young publisher, matches wits with the underworld, risking his life that criminals and racketeers within the law may feel its weight by the sting of the Green Hornet. Ride with Britt Reed as he races toward another thrilling adventure. The Green Hornet strikes again. Hurry, Cato! Here's where we break an insurance racket! to say you must. You've incurred a debt of $100 to these men. So while I sympathize with you, there's nothing the law can do to help you. They say they give to me good advice. Good advice on how to save the money on my insurance. They say they save them $400 a year. And for that, you agreed to pay them $100? Yes. I have a true policy. I pay only them every me money when I'm old. I... Policy? Yes, that's it. And your second policy was a 20-year life policy? That's it. On both these policies, you pay for a certain length of time, and then you are finished. The policies are paid up, in other words. Yes, yes, but these crooks, they tell me to change the policy. Your Honor, as insurance advisors, we merely showed her that she could get the same amount of protection and pay smaller premiums. Mr. Dougal, you told Mrs. Rivera that she would pay smaller premiums. Well, that's true. But you did not tell her that she would then have to continue to pay those premiums as long as she lived. Well... Your advice was to suggest that she switch from annuity and paid-up life insurance to straight life. That's it, isn't it? She'd pay less. Naturally, she'd pay less, but she'd go on paying longer. Why didn't you explain that to her? Well, so few people can understand the many angles of insurance that we don't... you took advantage of that fact to work a racket. Look okay, here, you can't... Quiet! But I tell you... I said quiet. Mrs. Rivera. Yes, sir. These men set themselves up as insurance experts. Unfortunately, in this particular case, I don't think they had your best interest at heart. That isn't true, Your Honor. Could you tell Mrs. Rivera that advice is given by the insurance company, given free to anyone who asks for it? No, that wasn't my responsibility. If she chose to come to us for advice, that's what we're for. She agreed to pay us, now she won't. I demand that she pay. Uh, Your ounce of flesh, eh? We're entitled to the money. If the laws of this state gave me any leeway, Mr. Dougal, I'd make it more difficult for you to collect. You gave Mrs. Rivera advice that she could have gotten for nothing. And not very good advice. If I could get it free, then why have to pay them? Because these men have taken advantage of the law, as well as you, Mrs. Rivera. They charge for advice. If you go to them for advice, the law can't stop that. A hundred dollars. I'm a poor woman. I thought you would help me. It's people like you. Poor people who are looking desperately for a way to save money. They're the ones who most often fall victim to racketeers. Oh, it wouldn't take me so long to pay. Money I need for the house, for the children. They said they would help me to save the money. And now I... <laughs> it is the hope of this court that someday men who make a racket out of insurance advising... I'll weed it out from those who do so wonderfully. That the State Insurance Commission will have the power. At some time, the State Insurance 
Insurance Commission is going to have laws passed to get power over them racketeers. And the third... Well, is that all that, Ashford? Well, that ain't half of it. He lives to them insurance racketeers with both fists. Was this Cook Dougal there? Sure, him and his partner Webster, and their lawyer. <laughs> they must have burned up when the judge laced into them. Not the rats, Casey. You mean they were cool? Like a cucumber. Something snakes ain't it awful how crooks can have the law working for them that way. What about poor Mrs. Rivera? Uh, she's got to pay it. He didn't help her, Axford. Gosh, there are lots of insurance counselors who are honest and really entitled to being paid for advice. Not to mention you can get advice from your insurance company for nothing, Casey. But to make that poor woman pay in a case like this... I was telling me about it last night, Casey. And the poor dame can't hardly afford to waste 50 cents, let alone 100 bucks. That's a shame. I don't have to see the man who's responsible for this. Just a moment. Who are you? This editorial on Daily Sentinel. You're deliberate slap in the face. You'll tell me who you are and what you want to do. You're Dougal. That happens to be my name. I seen you in park yesterday. Why, you chiseling cook, I ought oh, to Oh, Axford. I learned you to jip poor dame Axford, like that. Cut it out. Who's responsible for this, this thing? If you're talking about the editorial, it's just what you cook me. I'll see about that. It's a Dougal. I don't know who wrote that editorial, but... Oh, uh, plain dumb, eh? Huh? But I was saying, whoever wrote it, the orders came from the publisher, Mr. Reed. And I suppose he's out of town and can't be reached. He's right here, and I hope he'll see you. Yes, Miss Case. There's a Mr. Dougal out here, Mr. Reed. Dougal? You sure to find me? If you want to call him that, he's sizzling. Yes, sir. Uh, send him in. We'll see if we can't call him off. Yes, sir. Well? There's the door, mister. You walk through and you're face to face with Mr. Reed. Good. Better keep your guard up. That chin of yours looks awfully weak. He's got his last jaw, Casey. Uh, well, you wanted to see me? Come in. I certainly will. Which of you two is responsible for this editorial? I put it in the sentinel, Dougal. What about it? Never mind, Gunnigan. Your name's Dougal, isn't it? It is. Then you can complain to me. As publisher, I had that editorial written. Just what do you mean by advising the public to steer clear of certain insurance advice? Exactly what the article says, Mr. Dougal. I gather you can read. I'm an insurance advisor. Well, the man's bragging about it, Reed. Had a little case in court yesterday, didn't you? We were entirely within the law. Mrs. Revere owed us that money. For what? For our advice. For which you charged her a hundred dollars. That's our fee. I'm in an honest business. Stop right right there. The Sentinel doesn't make war honest businessmen, do you? Then how about this editorial? That editorial specifically states that most insurance advisors are right. honest, with a few exceptions. And you call me one? We mention no names. We didn't have to. If the shoe fits, Dougal, wear it. My business is offering advice to those in need. And the Sentinel's business is reflecting public opinion. What you've done now is... Stop right now, listen to me. Now, just for a change, you listen to me. You offer advice and charge a fee, is that right? Yes. Well, the Daily Sentinel offers advice, too. Only our fee is no more than three cents. The price of the newspaper. You mean by... Draw your own conclusion. We let our readers do the same. But you can't... That's what I'm on this paper, not you. If I believe that certain insurance advisors are all they should be, I can use the pages of the Daily Sentinel to warn the public. And that's exactly what I'm doing. Now, is there anything else? Well, I... Uh, well, it is. Uh, Looks like you're around, Reed. Now, we're rather busy, Tuzo. If you don't mind... Yes, Miss Case. There's a phone call here, Mr. Reed. It's for Mr. Dougal. Phone call? Put it on. Dougal, one moment. What is it now? This phone call is for you. For me? I'm not expecting it. Do you me. want it? It must be my office. Yes, yes, I'll take it. Hello? Mr. Dougal. Who is it? Miss Liggett. Anything wrong with the office? We, uh, I just heard something. It's about this. Well, well, what is it? What are you frightened about? It's uh, Mr. Dougal. It's the Green Hornet. The Green Hornet? Yes, he... The Hornet. Shall I call the police? Or police? No, no, no. Don't do anything. I'll be right over Dougal, did you mention the Green Hornet? Why, uh, no, no, it's nothing. Wait a minute. What about the Hornet? I don't know what you're talking about. In my office, I stepped over there immediately. What's the matter, that guy, Reed? He turned rather pale, didn't he, Gunnigan? Did he mention the Hornet, or am I hearing things? We both heard it, Gunnigan. Yes, Mr. Reed. Is Mr. Dougal gone, Miss Case? No, he went out of here on a tailwind. <laughs> call the city room, get Lowry in here. Lowry? On the double, he's got an assignment. The phone call, give us a lead, Gunnigan. The sentinel's going to use it. And how, Reed? Want me to get Lowry on the trail, eh? Dougal mentioned the Green Hornet. He covered it up all the way. And the saddle's going to uncover it. Yeah, we could... Hey, we... For good sake, do you? You suppose the Green Hornet may have something to do with the racket? Hey, boy, Casey says it's a free alarm. You got an assignment, Lowry? Right, Lowry. Dougal, the insurance counsel, just left here. He knows something about the Green Hornet. Now get after it. He's running back to his office. <laughs> Well, we got a letter. Where is it? I gave it to Mr. Webster. He's inside in the... I know where he is, you fool. 
Webster. Yes, I'm afraid of hurry. The police department. Webster, put down that phone. Oh, hello, sir. Well, I... Hey, what's the big idea? They were calling the police. Sure, we can't take any chances. Didn't we get tell you my orders? I said not to call the police. Yes, she told me, but Shut then up. I... Call the police and what happened? Huh? Publicity. More publicity. We've already had enough of that in the Daily Sun. Don't you We don't want it. any more glaring lights turned on it. So many people we've hoped. So what? We're within the law. We are, yes. We don't want bad publicity. Tell the police and they'll swarm down here. Ask our business. Reporters will flock oh, here. Yeah, there's something in what you say. I had an idea you might try a dumb stuff like this. That's why I hurried. Now, where's the letter from the Hornet? It wasn't from the Hornet. But you it's said... It's about the Hornet, yes. Here, look at it. Yeah. I'm sorry. Typewritten, too. What? Why, this note says that one of our clients is the Green Hornet. Yeah, it could be any one of a hundred people. This note must be from someone who knows the Hornet's identity. That's what I figured. But why should the Green Hornet be interested in what we're doing? I wish I knew. Maybe that's a crank letter, Dougal. If it were signed by the Green Hornet, if it were a demand for money, it might be false, you know, a crude attempt at a shakedown, but... Well, this letter's apparently doing us a favor. I hadn't thought of that. Must be from someone who hates the Hornet. Well, that takes in everybody. They say him like the plague. Yeah. If you want to learn the real identity of the Green Hornet, he's one of the suckers on your list. Do you think it might be that man Black, the one we had in yesterday? He said he was looking for advice on insurance, but he looked kind of tough. Uh, right? too dumb. Hey, Dougal, if we could locate the Green Hornet, we'd get that reward. Never mind the reward. Huh? You fool that reward of chicken feed. I don't get it. Webster, how much would the Hornet pay us not to tell the police? I don't... Hey, that's an idea. We could collect plenty. Yeah, if we learn who he is. We have a lead already. All we need is to... Mr. Dougal. Well? I'm a man outside. He's a reporter for your sentinel. He wants to talk about the Hornet. We're not talking. Send him away. Oh, wait. A reporter, huh? Maybe he can give us some information without knowing it. I'll talk to him first. Then we'll send him away. <laughs> I saw him. They said they didn't know a thing about the Green Hornet. Spoke to Dougal, Larry? Him and his partner, Webster. Claimed they never had a thing about the Green Hornet. But they asked an awful lot of questions. Let's see. About the Hornet? Whether I'd ever seen him, how big he was, what sort of build he you, had. You uh, told him? Sure, I've seen the Hornet. Came close to him a couple of times. Yeah, but never close enough. My boss, did it make any difference? Uh, no, Larry. You satisfied their curiosity. It's okay. And, boss, were they curious? You know those poor staff thought they were dragging the answers out of me? They weren't subtle? They tried to be. Can you imagine those mugs trying to be casual about digging for information with a reporter who's an expert at digging? Okay, Larry, that's all. Right, right boss. See you in the papers. Uh-huh. I'll keep after him. Yeah, there's no doubt Larry will keep after him. And so over Green Hornet. <laughs> One evening, Britt cornered Michael Axford, his bungling bodyguard, as he was about to leave. Now, wait a minute, Axford. Let me finish your coffee. I got a sip on the feet, but only two cups, Axford. Kate, hope you're slighted. Connie, your feelings ain't hurt, Kate. No, Mr. Sir. Oh. It's only on account of enjoying some investigation on the green harness, Reed. And being a man of action, I don't sit around when I could be out floating. It's about the insurance advisors? Yeah, them crooks, Dougal and Webster. They keep denying it. But me and Lowry got a theory that they're mixed up with the Hornet somewhere along the line. Yeah, Dougal mentioned the Green Hornet in my office. Yeah, but he's been denying it ever since, Reed. You believe him? Oh, not me. That's why I'm going out. I figured if we can't watch Dougal long enough, we're going to learn something. About the Hornet? Holy cow, what else? Have you uh, had any luck so far? Sir? Oh, me and Lowry been watching them like hawks. Them guys is acting awful suspicious, Reed. Yeah, I heard they pump Lowry all they could. That ain't all. No? 
They've been going around calling on a lot of people, Reed. Well, Lowry mentioned that. You, uh, checked up on these people? Every one of them was guys that had been going to Dougal and Webster for insurance advice. Could they explain the call? No. Nope. Just that the two of them asked a lot of phony questions. Indirect questions, actually? Yeah, that's it. Like they were trying to get information without letting on. The same way they asked Lowry about the appearance of the Green Hornet. Yeah, and... Holy crow. What is? I just took of something. Reed, do you suppose one of them guys might be the Hornet? Dougal or Webster? No. One of the guys is asking the questions for me. Golly, now that I recollect, there was one fellow who might be the Hornet. So? Yeah, a guy named Lund. Lund? Yeah. I got his address wrote down here in my little book. I'm keeping a list whenever we talk to somebody what we're speaking to Dougal and Webster. Well, let's see that book, actually. Well, Lund. What makes you regard him as a possibility? Me police train, and that's why. He looks like the Hornet? Well, I ain't never seen the Hornet's face on account of that mask the Hornet wears. But this guy's about the same size. Well, there's plenty of times I've been as close to the green Hornet as you and me right now, Reed. Uh-huh. But that's no indication, actually. After all, you've often said that my build was similar to the green Hornet. But this guy, Lund, Reed. Uh, wait, let me see that book. Another clue? Yep, just like I thought. Dougal and Webster went to see Lund twice. Twice, Reed. Don't that prove they got their eye on him? So you think one may be the Hornet? I got me tears, Reed. I leave you now when I find out. I'll be waiting. How do you read? Did I ever say your bill was like the Green Hornet? Oh, many times. But I must have been dreaming. The more I look at you, the more I can tell it must be this guy, Lund. It's so right, you. So the man's name is Lund. And they've seen him twice. Cato. Yes, Mr. Bates. That note we sent Dougal is bringing results. I heard Miss Oxford. Dougal's working a racket in insurance advising Cato. It's entirely within the law. So legal that nothing can be done to break it up. There's nothing legal. Very true. Once a crook, always a crook, Cato. By sending that note, we arouse the instinctive greed in those men. They're trying their best to discover if this man Lund is the Green Hornet so they can blackmail him. I see. Got the Green Hornet mask and the gas weapon, Cato. I'll meet you in the hiding place of the Black Beauty. You need phone call? Go ahead. I'll be right with you. Hey, well. Hello? I want to talk to Dougal. This is Dougal. What do you want? You got a note from me a week ago. Who is it? A note about the Green Hornet. The... Oh, yes, yes. I got another tip for you. You've got your eye on one man, haven't you? Well, I... I'd rather not say. You don't have to. But if you want to make sure, go to 1674 East 10th Street tonight. 1674? East 10th in an hour. But I don't... And if you line anything up, we split. Understand? Who is it? One hour. Now to join Cato and the Black Beauty. <laughs> Behind the secret panel in Brick Reed's clothes press, a narrow passage led within the wall of the apartment house and directly into an adjoining building. Supposedly abandoned, this building was in reality the hiding place of the super-powered, streamlined car of the Green Hornet. Everything set, Cato? The Black Beauty okay? Hi, Grady, Mr. Bates. We'll take the wheel. We have an hour to get to 1674 East 10th Street. I'll explain what you're to do on the way. Who did there, Mr. Bates? I got the address when I glanced at Axford's book. A man named Lund. The man Dougal thinks is the Green Hornet. How long have we been waiting, Dougal? Not an hour yet. But you don't even know who calls you or why. He referred to the note, didn't he? Nobody knows about that note but us and the man who sent it. Who is he? He didn't mention his name. We'll hear from him later. He want a slice of the dough himself. Then Lund is a hornet like we suspected. He looks more and more that way. This is his address we were told to come to. Lund fits what little description there is concerning the but hornet. But Dougal, don't... Sure, you shut up. Are you sure this is the right track? After all, we had a lot of people to choose from. In any group that size, we'd find someone to match that description. That's why we're going slowly. We'll make absolutely certain Lund is the hornet before we ask him for money. How much? Well, we should get at least... Hey, uh, listen. I hear it. Coming right past us. This car, the horse car. Look, he's stopping. Getting out. Right in front of Lund's rooming house. He went inside. Wait here. You're, you're going after him? Yep. His car's gone. He'll be alone. If I don't come out of 15 minutes, call the police. Tell them Lund is the Green Hornet. <laughs> What are you doing here, Mr. Dougal? I... A little cold, Lund. You don't 
mind if I keep this gun pointed at you? Get out of here. What are you hiding? Me? Why? Move away from that table. Keep your hands up. No, what do I tell you? Ten minutes and my friend calls the police. But you're making a mistake. I'm not the green hornet. I thought so. A mask and a bunch of stickers. They're not mine. Never mind that. You're the green hornet. We got a letter. We were parked right outside. I saw you get out of your car and come in here. What makes you think... Now listen, hornet. Go on denying it all you like. But I'm telling you this. Pay me 50,000 bucks or I'll tell the police you're the green hornet. My name is Lund. Okay, Lund. That's all I have to say. Think it over. But I... I tell you... Fifty thousand. Call me when you get it. And don't try to get rid of me either. I have a paper in a safe place, a very safe place. If something happens to me and Webster, the police will know where to go. He, he's gone. He can come out now. What's the matter, Lund? You look pale. What does this mean? You come in here wearing a mask and a gun. You get by. You were told what to say, and you said it. That's enough. He, he thinks I'm the one. It's fifty thousand dollars. Buying a little blackmail. I don't get this. I got nothing to do with you. You don't care for Google. Went to him for insurance advice. He get me. Then he comes in here. You want him to tell you to keep quiet? Well, I was just told. Listen. You don't have to point it out. Keep your mouth shut. Dougal's after the horn, if not you. He won't be harmed, I promise you. Just forget everything that happened, you'll be all right. Who's there? It's all right, Kato. Yes, all right? It's all set, Kato. Dougal's going to get a phone call in a few days. A call telling him the Green Hornet is agreeing to pay that blackmail money. <laughs> And I haven't been able to call you before, but it's all right. I knew you'd be sensible, Hornet. Don't use that word on the phone. Oh, yes. Very well. When shall I get it, Mr. Lund? Well, come around tonight. I'll, I'll be expecting you. Now, Kato. Dougal thought it was Lund calling. Your handkerchief over the mouthpiece. Muffle my voice well enough. Yes, sir. Tonight. Lowry and Axford are still at headquarters? I think so. No. Keep your fingers crossed on one angle, Kato. If Lund keeps silent, we'll smash these racketeers. But if Lund talks... Well, we'll have to play the cards as they fall. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am, this is the police department. Sergeant Moran talking. Okay. Anything hot, Moran? Just her temper, Lowry. Routine, pal. She's forgotten her house key. <laughs> The cop on the beat will probably find it in her handbag. Well, like I was saying, Lori, I've been over talking to that guy, Lund. And he's acting awful funny. You still think that guy's the green harlot? I've been figuring it out. He's the right side. Listen, and... Lord, that guy, Lund, is poor. He hasn't got a cent. Well, suffering snake. Maybe he's got the door sorted away in safety deposit. Yeah, or a gold mine. He could be, Lori. Nobody knows who the harlot is. One guess is as good as another. Okay, okay. How about ducking out for a cup of jam, Axe? But can sort of late, I... Sergeant Moran, police department. What's the... What? Green Hornet. Run? Hey, hey, say that again. Hello. What's up? The Green Hornet. Hey, get a squad car ready. Holy cow, is it Run Moran? No, no. All the guys said was get over to Lone Grooman House to the Green Hornet. Then he slammed the hook on. Now, Danny Sutton, get into there. Golly, I told you. Who was the cop? I don't know who called, but I'm going to find out. Hello, hello, Gunnigan. Come on, Lowry, we got to move. Keep a relay man handy, Gunnigan. It's a big story. The police just got a tip. We're on our way. It's the Green Hornet. Yes, I'm inside Lund. You? Matt, the Hornet is in it. Dougal's on his way here. He expects 50000 But I didn't call him. No, I called him. I haven't got any money. Tell him that. He, he said he'd tell the police I'm the Green Hornet. Well, you're not the Hornet, so why worry? Poor, I can't prove it. They'll take me, put me in jail. Dougal's right. collar crooks, racketeers. They're going to be smashed now. Hey, hold it up. Come on, Lund. We know you're there. Wait, I made it fast. Lund, tell him just a moment. I, I'm coming. Just a second. Come close to the window. Hurry. No. Don't shoot me. I'll be up this fire escape. You let the police in, but don't say a word about the Hornet being here. Do you understand? Yeah, what will the trigger, will you? will be safe, absolutely safe. You can follow those instructions. What's more, Dougal and Webster will be punished. All right. Have no choice. Go ahead. Answer that door. Okay, run. Let's have it. Are you the Green Hornet? Yes, no, We better start looking the place over, Moran. Maybe he's got the stuff in the way. Hey, quiet. Huh? Yeah. Somebody coming up the steps. Who is it, Lund? Dougal. Dougal and Webster. They're trying to blackmail. Blackmail, huh? Moran, Axford. 
Come on, Dr. Miss Martin. Are you right, Lowry? We we'll find out what they're trying to blackmail Lund about. Huh? You look awfully scared, Lund, for a guy that's supposed to. Inside, they're here. Now, let him in. We'll leave this closet door open a crack. Lund, come on. There you are with a hornet on the fire escape. Come in. All right, Webster, keep an eye on him. Where's the 50,000, Lund? Uh, you're making a mistake. I'm not the Green Hornet. Come on, come on. You called up. You said you'd have the dough. No, no, I didn't. Look, I'm tired of stolen. We know you're the Green Hornet. Now pay up. We could tell the cops. We want the dough instead. You pay or we will tell the cops. You're, you're blackmailing the wrong guy. I'm not the Hornet, and I can prove it. Look, huh? Okay, you ask for it. When the police learn about it... The police know already, don't you? Oh, Keep your hands off that gun. I got him. Give me that. Get him, get him. He's the green holder. Don't shoot him. I, I give up. We'll watch it on Dougal. And you two are a wonderful black man. Oh, you can't. Who's that we can? We heard you try to squeeze money out of him. He'll do a stretch for that and a long stretch. They're making a mistake. I'm not the honest. I, I can't talk. There's a gun pointed at me. Gun? Nobody's got a gun. No, no, I don't have it. Well, what of it? The Hornet uses a gas gun. You ought to know that. Uh, a gas gun? You mean it's just gas? I sure can't hurt a fly. So that's it. There's the Hornet there. Huh? I'm the fire escape. Come on, we'll get that crook. Well, there's nobody here. Dougal, you're fool. It's a trap. This man isn't the Hornet. Holy mackerel, look. There he goes. That's the Hornet's car. There, I told you. There's Drew and not the Hornet. There, we can see that, Lord. And you can't hold us. No, oh, you'll help her plenty. This guy isn't the Hornet, but you tried blackmail. And the charge is going to stick. Well, you let me go. That green Hornet, he did this. If I ever see him, I'll... I'm down, you rat. The only thing you're going to see is bars. Your racket's all washed up. <laughs> For blackmail. And now we can blast their insurance racket to bits. Spread it all over page one, Gunnigan. We're doing more than that, Reed. I took your suggestion. Lowry's doing a series of articles about those rats, telling the inside story of their insurance racket. That's great. When the public starts reading, that racket will be wiped off the slate. Get the sentinel out on the streets. <laughs> <laughs> 